Welcome my video friends to Through the Bible Brother Dave. This is February the 19th and we're glad to have you join us today. I've uh, been praying for you. I want you to know I pray for each of the subscribers and viewers each week, a special prayer time. And uh, I hope that God is blessing you and that your life is being used for the Lord. Well, we're going to pick up our study in the book of Exodus about the law. And uh, as as God has given to Moses the law, uh, something that's fearful, something that is great, something that is uh, that no man has ever kept except Jesus Christ. And as we go through it, uh, if you'll be honest, you can say, well, uh, I didn't, I, I failed in that point. Well, the New Testament tells us we've broken one point, we've broken it all. And the fact is, there's no man who has ever not sin, save for the God-man, Jesus Christ. Well, uh, it was written in verse 5. Uh, he says he will visit the uh, iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. What about that? So we see right here that of keeping the commandments of God or, or, or serving the Lord, we could say, uh, has a uh, uh, has a, a, can, uh, a promise with it that God would visit the iniquity. He, he said that he would uh, that he would visit the iniquity of the fathers to the third and the fourth generation. And it may be that some of you guys have gotten entangled in that. Uh, that doesn't mean God hates you. That doesn't mean that you can't be saved. Not not at all. Not at all. Uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, but he may visit the iniquity of the fathers upon you. Uh, I've, I've heard much debate about this, about uh, once you become a Christian, you got a totally clean slate, which is true. We do. Uh, but yet, uh, I also understand uh, that the Lord may very well visit upon us uh, the iniquities of our fathers from at time to time. Uh, it may be upon us which the Father hath done. And you say, wait a minute now. The Lord doesn't do that. He doesn't visit. He doesn't deal with the sin. No. But he will visit the iniquity of, of that to the third and the fourth generation. Uh, so uh, you may in your lifetime reap some things that your father did. Uh, you, you, may, you may have the same thing to befall you in life, perhaps. Uh, I, I believe that. And I know that's very debatable among uh, uh, Bible teachers there. I know some are just absolutely dogmatic. No, no. Uh, you're God's child now. You, you're, not be, you're not be treated like that. Another say not, you will be. And so I know there's a lot of controversy about that, but I certainly believe that uh, God will keep his word. He also keeps his word to we who put our faith and trust in him, that he has forgiven us of our sins and our iniquities, and he'll remember them against us no more. So my dear friends, uh, you may be visited by some of the iniquity of your fathers, but also if you call upon the name of the Lord, you'll find that he'll forgive you and, and all that's ever been uh, amiss in your past life uh, because he's a true and a, and a living God and a just God. And uh, But now if you, if you will not believe upon him, he says, of them that hate me. Notice that. That's the key to that. Of them to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Uh, you look at some of these nations who have not walked after the Lord. And uh, you, you look at what they reap uh, in the years that come to follow that. And they reap some very terrible things. Because God Almighty visits the iniquity of the fathers to the third and the fourth generations. Hey, the truth is I'm not God. And I can't, I can't make those judgment calls about when God has visited the iniquities and when he's not. We see examples of it as we go through the Bible and how that uh, the Lord remembered uh, 
that which Saul had done, and he visited that, and uh, upon his sons, uh, and so forth. And that's one example. Uh, but uh, you, you take some of these nations uh, who have forsaken the Lord God and have hated him and turned against him, and you look at their nation, uh, 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 poverty, maybe wrecked by earthquakes and destroyed by all kinds of things, floods, uh, pestilences, uh, to hit the poverty, the judgment of God uh, on people that hated him to the third and to the fourth generation. That's something to think about. And then you think about verse 6, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And look, uh, and look at how greatly America has been blessed. And we realize that our founding fathers uh, believed and had faith in God. Uh, some of them had different beliefs within that statement. I understand that. Uh, but yet our nation has been blessed. And our laws were, were taken and based on the scriptural laws. Uh, and our nation has been blessed because of that. Uh, people came to this world, uh, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of people came here to be free to worship God according to the dictates of their own heart. And uh, I think God has greatly, greatly blessed our country uh, because of the past leaders that we've had. I've got a picture up in, in the upstairs of George Washington, and it's an artistic uh, painting of, of him bowing beside his in front of his horse uh, in the snow, probably at, uh, at Valley Forge, praying and seeking the face of the Lord God. I remember Benjamin Franklin saying, as he stood up in the Continental Congress as they were trying to come up with the Constitution, and saying that, uh, he said that if a nation, uh, he said if God takes note of any sparrow that falls, Certainly a nation cannot rise without his aid. And he made the recommendation that they get a member of the clergy to open in prayer each day. They had gotten nowhere until they began to pray. There are many examples, my friends, uh, but uh, we know this, that for those that hate God, uh, your children are apt to reap that for generations to come, many generations to come. And, uh, and if you love God and you walk with him, uh, chances are he's going to show mercy to your children for generations to come. And that is a wonderful thing. And I know some men who are very, very rough men and uh, who got saved and knew the Lord. And, uh, and they loved him. They loved the Lord. And uh, I can see that in their children. Their children have been visited by God. And their children have been blessed because the Lord God had visited them with blessings instead of visiting them uh, in judgment for their father's iniquity. And so my dear friends, you might have been on the wrong road. You at one time may have been uh, one that hated God, one that did not love him. And uh, my life has changed for you. Now you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, break the curse. Break that curse. Don't let that be visited upon your children in time to come. Now let your children be visited with good things from the Lord. I believe if you walk with him, you can break that curse. Whether you're the first or second, third or fourth generation, they're all. You may be the son of a man who didn't know the Lord, who hated the Lord, and did not worship and serve him. You might be the grandson of such. Uh, hey, you can break that curse because if you love God and you serve him, he has promised that he'd show mercy unto your, unto your children uh, of them that love him. And you can claim that promise of God and you can break that curse. And your, and your family and your heritage after you can be blessed. Now, there's a lot, and I know there's a lot of people with a lot of thoughts about that. But uh, anyhow, that's my take on it. That's my look upon that. 
Uh, you can certainly look around and see people alive who are better blessed than you are. And we're not to do that. We're not to compare ourselves one against the other. But it's easy to see that. We're not stupid. And the Lord lets us be brilliant enough to see that. Uh, there are some people who become very wealthy in life. Others of us who don't. Uh, there are some people who are blessed with great strength and great help. Others are not. Uh, there are people blessed with uh, all kinds of good things. Others not, don't have those good things as such. And uh, uh, it's the Lord who knows how to rightly give gifts and blessings. And uh, as we do look around and see that, we're not to be jealous about it. We're not to be covetous about it. But we should make every step we can to live for the Lord and live a godly life for Him regardless of how blessed somebody may be around us. And we may not have those blessings upon us. But nonetheless, the Lord is great and He is right and He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise. And so we ought to keep in mind that we've got children coming after us and that we ought to uh, walk with Him and to, uh, and to serve him. A lot of times a drunkard son will become a drunkard too. Have you ever noticed that? A lot of the time a, an adulterous father will have an adulterous son. And a lot of times an adulterous woman will have adulterous children. And that's a shameful thing. But on the other hand, uh, or on the other hand, a praying mother is apt to have praying children. A church-going dad is apt to have children that go to church. Uh, a father who uh, loves God is apt to have children that love God. A father who is honest and doesn't steal, chances are whose children are going, are going to think about that too and be that kind of a child. But you see, the Lord visits, and he visits in various ways. I visit in that iniquity upon those that hate him. So my dear friends, You've got everything to gain by seeking the face of the Lord. And you may never be blessed as well as the person next door who's got a bigger house, more land, more cattle, more money in the bank. And that's something to think about. Uh, you may never be that. You may be in your little share cropper's house and uh, just hoping the crops do good to barely get by with your family the coming year and to be able to feed and clothe them. But hey, if you know the Lord, uh, you, you'll find that your children will be blessed with good things and not bad things. What about that? That's something to think about when you think about the blessings of God and also uh, uh, the power of God to visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and the fourth generation. Think with me in the Bible again uh, to Noah, Noah's sons. And that one son, Ham, uh, that did probably uh, uh, commit homosexual deed upon his daddy. And, uh, and what did Noah do? He cursed the sons of Canaan, not Ham. He put the curse upon his children. So it was a very awful thing that Ham more than likely did to his father so awful that it was visited upon his children. Uh, I think it's probably still on them today. The curse of Noah. I don't mean that they can't be saved. They can be. Anybody who will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, but there are just some things you won't shake until you're in the next world, my friends. And uh, so keep that in mind. What you do daily is very important. How you live before your children is very important. How you walk before him is very important. My dear friends, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, I would certainly encourage you to call upon him in this very day and begin your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. My walk with him has been going on since 1976. Uh, that's August of 76. Uh, into my 47th year now it is. And so what about that? And I want you to know, I wouldn't take anything from my journey now. I wouldn't change it. 
If I go back, I don't want to do it more dedicated to the Lord. Glad I made that step one day.